Welcome to the Backpacking Podcast. John Kelly here with Jeremiah Stringer, the king of Kentucky backpacking. Uh, Good to see you. So, here's the thing, man. Yes? Here's the thing. We go out today, and I think you scammed me. How about that shuffleboard? No, no, I think you scammed me. I think you scammed me. He goes, so so we went out to this cool restaurant, really yes. cool restaurant, which yeah. me and my wife are going to go to this weekend, I think. Yeah. Um, but there was a, uh, there's a, he says, we're going to play shuffleboard. Now, when I think of shuffleboard, I think of what old people do on you a think, cruise with yeah. the big sticks, and they push the the things across the wooden floor and all yeah. that, and it's like a big triangle, and you're trying to get into the numbers and all that. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. This was like some like stand up thing where you got these weighted pucks and you have to slide them down and and all this and, and so here's here's the thing man <laughs> it's like they cut a pool table in half but then stuck it on the other end like that's how the yeah. length is made I mean after an hour and thirty minutes of playing this one game of ours um, <laughs> no so so he goes we're gonna play to twenty one I'm like okay cool and so we start and I, I think I'm doing well and then all of a sudden Jeremiah scores like five points. And I'm down by a lot. And then he keeps scoring. And then finally he, he kind of lets me catch up to him. And then he wins. And and I think you you knew what you were doing the whole time and you were playing me. <laughs> well, we had $100 on it. I know. I win the money. I know. And I'm, now just, I'm, having a I, I'm just kidding. It, it, I will say this is my fifth cup of coffee today. This is the third podcast we've recorded today. Yes. And somehow you've changed your clothes on every single one of them. Uh-huh. And I look exactly the same. So people watching the video are probably thinking, man, John is a bum. He never changes his clothes. <laughs> He's got the, he has one outfit. He has one outfit that he always wears. <laughs> what people don't realize is I'm broke. Oh, is that what it is? I spend all my money on camera gear and backpacking gear, and like I don't have any normal clothes. Yeah, not one penny sent, uh, not one penny spent yeah, on the I don't kids. even pay my water bill. No water bill. Yeah. No Christmas gift for the no, children. No, we grow. We don't even do groceries, man. Like, we go to the <laughs> local food bank and get all of our food because it's just like we yeah. just yeah. No, that doesn't happen. I'm kidding. But anyways, uh, this is the fifth cup of coffee that I've had today. The fifth. That's nice. That's real nice. Uh, it's the fifth cup of coffee I've had today because I've only got about two and a half hours sleep. We talked about this a couple episodes ago. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, exhausted, bro. You're gonna sleep good tonight, though. I hope it's not while I'm driving home. <laughs> that, would, that would be that'd be pretty awful. We'll send you on the road with a cup of coffee. Uh, I will be stopping somewhere and getting a uh, an energy beverage of sorts. Now, how much caffeine is too much caffeine? Probably what I've drank today. Now you know how my heart is probably going to explode. Like I'm, you're going to hear, not that I died because I fell asleep, but because I had a heart attack driving home. I don't think you can have a caffeine overdose, and you don't have any sugar in there. Like everything you drank is sugar free because you're keto stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, t- tell them what you ordered at lunch that was keto. Oh, lunch. man, we had some good food at lunch. Yeah. So uh, so it was this really cool restaurant. Uh-huh. And like most restaurants, everything is carb laden, like just carbs everywhere. Oh, yeah, I got a burger. And, and so uh, <laughs> so I, they burger. had these like ridiculously like awesome stuffed avocados uh-huh. with pulled pork and cheese. And pork and cheese are like all over my diet, yes. you know, because – Fat is good, and avocados are high in fat, but it's really good fat. And so I had that, and then I had a, a blue cheese wedge salad mm-hmm. with it, and that's what I had for lunch today. It was really good, man. Now, let me ask you a question. We'll get to the backpacking. Okay. I promise. Give it to me. But I want to know, and we talked on here numerous times about keto and how your diet and everything's going and still going. Yeah. So let's fast forward five years from now. Yes. I've already lived this. Mm-hmm. We, I made lifestyle changes, and I have sustained those lifestyle changes. So do you forever see yourself eating keto? And if not, how do you transition toward that lifestyle change that's sustainable? I actually like keto. Mm-hmm. Like, I quit doing keto for a couple of months, and I regret it. But do you like keto because of the results you get? Or do you like keto because the way, like mental clarity and the way that it makes your stomach feel? I feel, I feel good. Yeah, I feel good doing keto. Like I just feel good doing it. So keto is like very minimal carbs, right? Very so minimal have, carbs, and um, you're still counting calories, kind like not technically, but you're limiting your caloric intake as a result of not having the carbs. Which I'm is, not. Here's my thing: is I'm not trying to lose weight fast. Yes. Because people who lose weight fast, like I've done before, crash. Yes. And when you crash, you go right back to where you were, and then you get depressed. And what do you do when you get depressed? You eat more. Yeah. And so then you, a lot of times you end up putting on more weight than what you had the first time. But and I've, and so for me, I've been trying to not go too crazy with the limiting calories. Uh-huh. I am limiting calories to a degree, but not. I'm not like doing 1,500, 1,600 calories or something like that. 
uh, I'm probably at 2,000 or just under 2,000 calories a day. Yes. And so I'm not losing weight like 10 pounds a week or 5 pounds a week or anything like that. I might lose a pound or two a week. But I think that anybody that would consider – not any – Anybody that I would consider a uh, a like exercise expert or a nutrition expert or something like that, if they were helping somebody set up a plan on cutting weight, I think that they would tell you to do the limiting calories, not a ton, not like doing 1,200 a day, yeah, but limiting calories like you're saying. I think that they would – all of them that are worth their weight, would tell you to do it that way. Yeah. And I think it's a little bit of an overgeneralization on the, uh, like, losing weight too fast. Like, nobody's going to lose five pounds. You might at the beginning. like you know, Well, it's amazing. Some people can really do that. You know, some people can do that. But you have to go to extremes mm -hmm. to make it happen. And the problem with it is if you're somebody who goes to extremes on one end, mm -hmm. when it's over, you're probably going to go to an extreme on the other because there's this need for the extreme. Yeah. And and that's the problem with that is like it's a psycholo I think it's a psychological thing. When oh, you yeah. when you get to where you have to work in extremes, mm -hmm. well, when you get done, your celebration's gonna be extreme. Yeah. You know, and what ends up happening is then you get depressed and so now you're extremely depressed. And so you're eating way more because again you're in extremes. And I think it's just that whole thing of I think it's like backpacking. Mm -hmm. Dude, when I start doing something, I go all in, you yeah. know? When I did Mount Kilimanjaro, I probably spent twenty five hundred dollars just on gear. Yeah. To do Mount Kilimanjaro. Yeah, all that's in. Not, yeah, in all in. First. Let's go. You know, like that's it's kind of what I did. And I think when I when I decided to do keto, um, I realized that my lifestyle was bad. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just about being fat. Yeah. You know, and I'm still fat. I'm not like like losing sixty pounds for me what doesn't mean I'm skinny. Mm -hmm. You know, that means I'm just not as fat. Well, it's not about the fat. It's about, like, health, right? But you know what I'm saying. So the byproduct of the living the healthier lifestyle is that your body's healthier, so you lose fat. Well, I needed, for me, I needed something that I could do without having to think about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't really have to think about keto that much. I just have to watch what I eat. But it's not like I have to, like, count. I'm not counting calories. I'm not doing macros even. Mm -hmm. Even though they tell you they want you to do macros and all this stuff. I just know don't eat dumb fat. Like, don't eat a bunch of fried stuff. Yeah. You know, don't eat stuff that's super high in cholesterol. Um, make sure I get a lot of protein. Make sure I do get fat in mm -hmm. my system. Um, because the keto, the difference between keto and a lot of other diets is keto actually changes your body chemistry. Okay. So the body is, is the way we feed it is that we've trained our bodies to burn carbs for energy. Well, when you go into ketosis, which is what it's called, when you do keto is your body then shifts from burning carbs to burning fat uh -huh. because there's not enough carbs to burn the carbs for energy. But, w but the way that I cut weight was independent of keto. Right. But my body still burned the fat too. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between the ketosis that you're getting from doing a keto diet and whatever you would label the way I did it where I burned fat? When I go out on trail, mm -hmm. I don't have to eat sugary stuff. To get energy. Yeah, because you have sustained energy levels. Yeah, and and because of the fat in my body, it can actually feed off of that as energy. But Whereas you can cut fat, but it's not necessarily using the fat in your body as an energy store. Okay. It's just burning the fat off, and you're causing it's causing you to lose the weight. Okay. It's just a shift in, in the way your body it metabolizes is, food. Oh, okay. I think I understand it, but I still didn't hear a, a clear-cut answer on the – let's fast-forward five years. So five years from now oh. – my diet is still going to look like it looks today, mm -hmm. except maybe a little bit healthier. My thing for me, I want to keep, if I can keep doing this, I'll just keep doing it. Yeah. But I, I do want, because I don't know what the, the long-term term effects are. Mm -hmm. Like, I should be okay, like, doing, I, I think Tim Tebow does keto. Mm -hmm. He's about the healthiest human being on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, as long as, like, numbers don't get all thrown out of whack and I don't all of a sudden start having, like, issues with cholesterol, high cholesterol and stuff like that, I'll probably keep doing it. You're talking about like you get a blood panel done and then numbers yeah. come back and some things are not right because... If things are out of whack, then I'll shift. So... But, but it does, they haven't been yet. Let's yes. put it that way. They haven't been yet. Yeah, I'm sure there's a ton of research on keto, So, but I don't think that it has been long... Most people don't do that long term. Yeah. You know, they, not that they're doing it as a fad diet. And I, I don't know. Not a lot of people do it as a fad diet. 
Yeah. A lot of people really do it as a fad diet. So I don't, uh, I still don't know Mm -hmm. if it's not sustainable and you haven't had a lifestyle change. I'm not saying my way was the right way because I don't think there is a right way. No, there's multiple ways. But I don't understand how can you navigate those waters and you, you get off keto and then you go to eating a healthy, what we could call normal diet. How do you navigate those waters if you haven't well, had the define experience? Define normal because cause the normal diet for America is cheeseburgers, french fries, <laughs> mac and cheese, you know, fried, well, I, carb laden. But I didn't say normal. I said normal, healthy okay. diet. So okay. So what, whatever you would consider a normal, healthy diet, I think most people would be like, You'd have somewhat balanced macros, which macronutrient, macronutrients, you have proteins, fats, and carbs. Carbohydrates, yeah. Yeah, and you can divide those up into whatever percentages that you've read the research mm-hmm. on that says they're supposed to be this for you. Yeah. Argument's still out on what the best balance is and what your training style is, whether you're backpacking or weightlifting. I think it depends on, on the person. I don't think there's any one that fits everybody. I know, and I don't think that I've done it the right way or the only way, but I'm asking, so five years from now, you're done. If if you are done with keto, mm-hmm. then how do you navigate the waters of the lifestyle change, and not like what what would your diet look like? I don't know because I'm not there. Do you think I I know you're not there? But isn't it isn't it scary to look at the future? And I know uncertainty is a very real thing, right? We face it every day right. in life. But to to spend so long. And then where do you start at? Mm-hmm. Because. Well, I've, I've done research on like weaning off, okay. like weaning off of it. I've done research on that stuff. What's it look like? It, it just looks like slowly adjusting those macros basically is like, cause your body has to change its chemistry. Okay. Like case here, here's a good, here's a good way to look at it. When uh, my birthday hit a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. I turned 812 years old. You happy know? late birthday. Yeah, Happy late birthday. Um, we went out to red lobster mm-hmm. and I decided I was going to use that as a cheat night. Sounds awesome. But I didn't cheat. I had a full-on carbohydrate affair. Uh-huh. Like, I had potatoes, and I had rice, and I had those cheddar biscuits, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had it all. I've never had cheddar Bay biscuits. I've had cheddar biscuits, but never made by the Red Lobster Kitchen. You need to, man. That there's has to no, change. There's no Red Lobster here. There's one in Lexington. Yeah, I'll check it out. There's two in Lexington, actually. But, but here's the thing. Okay, so I did ahead. that. I was sick for three days. Oh, uh, because the body chemistry was off? Because my body chemistry was off. So I was sick as a dog for three days uh-huh. because I did that. And I think it's good that that happened. And I, I say this to people all the time. It's like sometimes you need to cheat and feel like crap afterwards so you remind you of why you're doing what you're doing Yeah. so that you keep doing it. And so for me, that was like, okay, screw that. I'm not cheating again, man. I'm going to stick with this diet and I'm going to keep it going Yeah. because I have a goal, you know? And I want to hit my goal. And uh, I've got kids that are young. In a few years, they're going to be doing sports. And I want to be able to play with them in the backyard. And I want to mm. be able to do stuff with them. I want to take my daughter and my son backpacking. And uh, it's going to be a whole lot easier if I don't weigh a lot. Yeah, that's true. And but when you wean yourself off of it, so you're slowly changing your body body chemistry back. I don't, mm-hmm. I'm not really sure what that means. And I don't know if you can articulate it. Well, I'll and, be honest. The One of the things I've learned is... Sugar is basically poison. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'm talking like processed sugars, things like that. It's poison. It really is. It's yeah. not good for you. There's nothing about it that's good for your body. No, we're not designed to intake no. that kind of. I mean, we do it all the time backpacking. You know, well, you may not. I but don't, but yeah. Most yeah. people are going to eat. Like, I eat a lot of chocolate out there. And, you know, yeah. you take those sugary snacks and you're like, oh, I'm going to climb this hill. So I better eat these gushers or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's. I think the thing that I'm, I've learned the most from this is that sugar is basically poison. I mean, it's just yeah. everything processed about it is sugar. bad. Yeah, processed sugar. Not like fruit and stuff like that, but like no. processed sugar is just not good for you in the least bit. Yeah. And so I don't know if I'll ever go back to really eating much of that. Mm. Just because it, it kind of makes me, it kind of feels gross to me at this point. Mm. Halloween. Yeah, I didn't eat a single bit of Halloween candy. Can yeah. you believe it? I didn't have a single Christmas cookie this year. Man, I've binged on candy since Halloween. <laughs> Good for you, bro. <laughs> not, it's not good, man, because now I'm working out and everything's harder. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing is like, like I said, it's good that I cheated because uh-huh. it, it 
felt terrible for the next three days. Okay. And so it makes me like, I don't want to cheat because I don't want to, I just work so hard for this. I don't want to have to fight to get it back. Sure. You know? And so, um, a lot of it for me is just, this is lifestyle changing. It's not a diet for me now. It's yeah. what I eat. Like people ask me like, are, are you on a diet? Like, no. Well, aren't you doing keto? Yeah. Like, well, but, but is that not a diet? I'm like, no. I think there's misnomers out there about what a diet is though. Yeah. People think diet and they don't think of like diet is in what I put into my body. Right. They right. Think diet is in a program. A fad diet. They think yeah. of a program. Yes. And this isn't really a program for me at this point. It's literally what I do every day. And I don't think about it. Like uh-huh. when we went out to eat today, I didn't sit there and like, Whine. I didn't whine and cry over, oh, I can't eat that, I can't eat that. I mean, there were a couple times your wife was like, you probably can't eat that, can you? I was like, no, probably not. Yeah. And then I found some things I could eat, so I ate those. And here's the thing. Dude, I eat tons of vegetables. Uh-huh. Like, people think that when you do keto, all you're eating is, like, cheese and meat. And, and it's like, yeah, you eat cheese and meat. Yeah, those things happen. But, dude, I eat so many vegetables. Mm. Like, I had a crap ton of asparagus and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and, like – green beans and salads and i mean dude i eat i eat all kinds of vegetables so i i completely agree that compared to before keto and i have no idea what you're eating but it sounds like you're eating the typical american diet that i think just take out the bread take out the rice take out the potatoes yeah and and that's pretty much what I'm doing. I mean, just, I don't eat all the grains and stuff like that. So, or corn, but I couldn't eat corn before that, so that didn't matter. Yeah, you poor cornless. And guy. I love corn, dude. And I am so allergic to it; it's ridiculous. <laughs> Can you have corn <clears throat> syrup? Uh, I don't know. High fructose corn syrup. I don't really. I don't really drink anything that has that in it. Well, but you did before. No, I didn't. I really didn't. I didn't drink a lot of sugary stuff. I never like had like like I never drank sugary lemonade and stuff. I've not really been a big, like, I don't like the taste of corn syrup. Uh-huh. But, so. but there's a ton of things that have corn syrup that aren't just like sodas. Mm-hmm. You didn't consume any of those? No cereal? Nothing like that? Not I'm a just, lot. Not a lot. Let's put not enough that it would it would cause any problems for uh, me. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was just like. Straight corn is the yeah, problem for me. Yeah, let me cut some ears off the corn. Yeah, and, like if I ate, and I think part of it, it, I think part of it was the actual corn itself, like the the structure of the corn that caused the problems for me, it would feel like razor blades going through my stomach when I ate it. So, so that's an exciting thing to talk about on a podcast. <laughs> this is kind of getting to be a downer, guys. I'm sorry. I apologize. So my – I don't know if you call it concern or what. I just I just want – I'm curious on what it looks like whenever you, you have a lifestyle change and this lifestyle change is keto – and then in five years, if you haven't done keto, if you are prepared for a completely different lifestyle change where you've reintegrated those foods but have a healthy relationship with them. Yeah, it's it's going to have to be like what I'm doing right now where I just have to – it has to be something I can do without having to think too hard about it. So is it more like portion control? Like, oh, I'm going to have one biscuit yeah, it's, it's instead por- of – Yeah, it's portion control. It's just I know I can eat this and I can't eat that. I don't think that's ever going to change. I think like the rest of my life, I'm just going to be like, I don't want to eat that. I can't eat that. Yeah. I think that maybe for you and I mean, I'm not trying to sound like an old wise man, right? You're, you're older, you have more life experience, Yeah. you know, just across the board. So I don't know, but it, I hopefully that it's not just keto. It's like people can, whether it's you or somebody else can do something like keto. And if it's sustainable for long enough and they come to the realizations, then mentally they've, they've had a shift and they understand yeah. how their relationship with food instead of completing a goal of losing well, weight. You want to see a guy who's done a really good job with keto, uh, Jason Huckaba, Huck Outdoors. He's uh-huh. a YouTuber. Um, look at videos of his from a few years ago and look at his more recent videos. Lost a lot of Lost weight. Lost a ton of weight. Looks great. And he did it all with keto. And uh, I, think the, I think the most challenging thing with keto is backpacking. Yeah. I think by far it's the most challenging. I have to really change up the way I think about my carbs when I do backpacking mm-hmm. because it's nearly impossible to get backpacking food that doesn't have carbs. It's yeah. nearly impossible. I did it um, j- backpacking with Jason. He'll tell you, like when, I was, when we did uh, Pictured Rocks in May, mm. I was keto the whole week. 
and I had stuff offered to me and like they were making fry bread and all this kind of stuff. Do you uh-huh. want some? I'm like, no, man, I'm good. I'm good. And, uh, but I was able to stay within my macros. Now I did raise my carb number for those days. Um, just because it was nearly impossible to keep the carb number down given the kind of food that you can eat when you're out backpacking. Cause you can't eat fresh food for a week because it won't stay fresh. Right. So you're ha- having to eat a lot of uh, freeze dried food, dehydrated food, stuff like that. And, just because of the way things are made, it's just nearly impossible to so, do that and not have carbs involved. What What is it that creates that mental shift where it's no longer a... So I have family members, okay? I'll give you an example. Yeah. And I have one family member in particular that now weighs... It feels so bad talking about weight. Weight is not the best predictor for health, but... But it does give a good idea. Yes. So he is like, I don't know, probably 380 pounds now. He's yeah. probably about my height. But he got down to 210, maybe 200. So he's it looked healthy. I don't know if you're actually healthy at that weight or not. Yeah. It depends on your lifestyle and working out and what you eat and all that. But he's taking these diet pills and limiting his calorie. He's done a carbless diet which was basically keto, and he, he like he couldn't even chew a stick of gum. He's like, oh, it's too I, many carbs. I do, I do sugar-free gum all the time. I have some okay. in my truck right now. So anyway, he got down to that weight, but then I think it was more of a matter of hitting my goal weight instead of living a healthy lifestyle. And at what point do you hit that, that, like, that point, that fulcrum where it goes from – Okay, I'm not working toward a goal of weighing 180 pounds. I'm working toward living a sustained lifestyle where I can live longer and feel better. For me, it was when we went backpacking uh, last July, and I almost had a heart attack. I mean, it was that simple. Yeah. At that point, it wasn't about losing weight. It was about dying. Yeah. You know, I couldn't go out with you guys. It was 90 degrees out. It was like almost 100% humidity. It was a hot day. It was really hot. If you remember, we stopped down at a creek and everybody was soaking wet. Yeah. And a couple of the guys actually got down and sat in the creek to cool down because it was so hot. Yeah. And I almost didn't make it out of the park. You know, I ended up going out to my truck and sitting for two hours in air conditioning waiting for you guys to come back out on the off the trail. Uh-huh. And even then, I mean, I, I had a 102 temperature for like two days. So was that before you started any dieting, or was that part of the way in? That was before I started doing keto. That was before, actually, that was before I started doing any dieting. I should say, because okay. after I did that, I started researching things. I didn't do keto until January uh-huh. of 2021. So for you, just just so I can make sure I'm straight here on the timeline. So before that, you're just living life. You know, you're raising your kids. You're married. You know. If you, if you want McDonald's, you can go get it, whatever. You're having living life. Having my son was the thing that, that really took my my weight the wrong direction. Like, mm-hmm. my son was born 10 weeks early. Uh-huh. So he was born and he was in NICU for a month. Yeah, and very there was a scary. Point, yeah, there was a point we didn't know if he was going to make it. You know, we weren't, we weren't sure if he was going to live. And so um, during that time, we were spending every day going back and forth between our home so we could spend time with our daughter mm-hmm. and go into the hospital spend time with our son. And uh, we uh, we would eat fast food every meal because it was easy. Uh-huh. And we did that for a month. Well, if you know anything about habits, you do anything for 21 days in a row, yeah. it becomes a habit. That's basically what the standard is for that. Mm-hmm. And so we did this for more than 21 days in a row, and it became a habit. And all of a sudden, we're eating out almost every meal. Yeah. We're spending all this money. so mu- convenient, dude. So convenient and so expensive. Oh, it got me. I got my first big boy job out of college. And I don't, you start off making like $35,000 a year. But for me, from going as a broke college student, working at Walmart part-time, to like making $35,000 a year, it's Kentucky rich, baby. It is Kentucky rich, and, especially where you live. <laughs> yes. I mean, the poverty, everybody's below the poverty line. Yeah. So anyway, I was making thirty five grand, and don't freak out. I know a lot of our listeners live in California, and it costs a lot more to live there. Oh, like a lot more. A lot more to live there. Substantially cheaper. It, it costs a lot more to live in Wisconsin. Yeah. And we were talking about that earlier today. A lot of places. Yeah. So I was making this money and my wife as well. So she was making about the same amount as me because she had the same position that I did. And so we were living paycheck to paycheck on that. And her rent was only, 
I don't know, it's like 800 bucks a month, 700 a month. We were in a duplex and we were eating fast food all the time. And I was just packing on the weight. And yeah. It's so convenient. But I didn't have any money. I was like, what the, how can I? How can I be broke this? when I'm making all this money? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Well, see, that's just it, though. Like, for me, the, the real, because I had just climbed Kilimanjaro like a year before this, right? Yeah. And what and was your weight then? I, I was down around 220. Okay. So, um, where we, you know, we have our son, all this, and then we just keep this going. And the weight was coming on slowly. It wasn't like it all packed on fast. Yeah, that's what people and, don't understand. It takes it takes time to get fat. That's why it takes time to lose weight. Yeah, and and then COVID happened. Yeah, punch you when, right in the mouth. And when COVID happened, I wasn't doing anything. Mm-hmm. But I was still eating crap. Because you could still go through the drive through and get food. Yeah. But nobody wanted to go to the grocery store because you didn't want to walk around people for fear of getting sick. You know how that – it was a lot of paranoia during that yeah. time and everything. And so uh, – I we would go to the fast food restaurant and go drive through, mm-hmm. and they had the touchless pay and all that kind of stuff, and and so and they would hand you your food on a tray and you could grab it, you know, the whole nine. Yes. And, and so we did a lot of that, and I ballooned up to over three hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. And how tall are 305, you? Three hundred five, five eight. Five eight. Five 300. eight three hundred eight or three hundred five. Five eight three hundred five. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, man, it was it was brutal. And then we went hiking at, shortly after you know everything cleared up in in Kentucky. And sure enough, man, I, I literally, I almost had a heat stroke, Yeah, you know, heart attack or something while I was out there with you guys. And that day I went home and, um, I just sat in air conditioning for two days, just trying to get my temperature down. Mm -hmm. And I remember making a video a week or two after that and just being honest with myself that it wasn't, this wasn't because it was too hot out because you guys were all out there. Mm Mm-hmm. And I wasn't by far the oldest person out there either. <laughs> no. <laughs> and so it, it wasn't a thing of of the weather was the fault. I was the problem. And so I realized real quick, I've got to take better care of myself. You know, I've got kids, man. I don't want them to grow up without a dad. Right. So it was like, for me, it was just a thing of I've got to get this crap together or I'm going to have orphan children and a widowed wife and mm-hmm. I don't want to do that to them. So this was more about I want to change my lifestyle. And if it takes me a little longer to lose the weight – that's fine because I'm changing a lifestyle that's going to be sustain, uh, sustainable as opposed to a crash diet where maybe I'll lose 100 pounds in six months. But then there's that potential that I'll crash coming out of it and just gain it all back. Yeah, I think the people, a lot of times the people that that happens to, it's because they haven't had the mindset shift. Yeah. And what happened with me was in, in high school, like my freshman sophomore year around that time like going into high school i was already i was always overweight as a kid Mm -hmm. and then freshman year i was probably around 260 or so sophomore year about 275 and i joined the football team and stopped i stopped drinking soda so the way it works is football begins in the fall of you actually start playing games right anybody that watches football knows fall football season and then you play, and then in high school, you start getting into the winter months, and all the games are over. They play the state championship. Well, football doesn't just stop. You know, you have the off season where you're training the whole time, you're conditioning, a lot of lifting, lifting, and all that. Yeah. Yes. So, I joined football like two weeks before the season start. They'd already had summer camp. They already had conditioned all through the winter and all that. But I didn't participate in any of that. So sophomore year, I joined the football team. And I'm like 275, maybe six foot, six one, something like that. So I was a big guy. They wanted me. Then went through, didn't really play anything, hardly any JV too, probably. You know, this was like, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago now. Right. So it's kind of hard to remember everything, but didn't play a whole lot. And then I remember um, my sophomore year of high school wintertime hit so season's over and i'm like you know my new year's resolution i'm gonna stop drinking soda and eating like uh stuff like zebra cakes and donut sticks and all that kind of stuff no snack cakes no sugar nothing like that yeah stop drinking soda stop eating that and then i went from like 275 didn't change anything else was just a teenager to like 240 235 240 and i was like wow and i was weightlifting. i'm running all the time because of football and then season goes through, I play a ton of JV. And then senior year, I'm about the same weight, go through college, about the same weight, still active. 
Um, plus, I'm living on a budget, so I can't afford a whole lot of food. Right, you know? right, right. So then graduate college and start eating that fast food I talked about. And then got up to like 280, 290, 295. And then played in a high school, uh, high school basketball, like student versus faculty. And my body was pretty much giving out on me, like having a lot of knee problems and stuff. Had to go to uh, physical oh, yeah. therapy and all That's that. That's no fun. No, and the doctor told me that I was too fat. He's like, you need to lose weight. You can't do the same things you've done two years ago because you weigh 300 pounds. And he's like, at six foot two, six foot three, you're just too heavy to do that kind of stuff. Your body is giving up on you. So he's like, you got to cut the weight. So that's when I had my mindset shift Right. was whenever I played that basketball game and I played pickup basketball all, I was a high school athlete, played pickup basketball all through college, all the time, like four nights a week right? for hours. And I realized I was only like 19, 20 years old. Right. So you, you just go to sleep and the next now day you're, you're pushing good. 30. Now I'm pushing 30. It takes a little longer to recover, <laughs> <laughs> but that's why it's important to live the, the healthier lifestyle. So I think that most people that get hit on the rebound of like my fad diet is over and then they gain a bunch of weight back. Oftentimes it's because they haven't had a mindset shift. Yeah. They've hit their goal. But then once you hit the goal, you can't sustain it because well, it's a mental thing, too. Yeah, and and I not wanna, everybody, though. Yeah. Well, I want to say this, too. I don't think people realize – I'm going to put it like this. If you have a friend who is uh, who's an alcoholic mm -hmm. and it's it's almost ruined their life, you know, mm -hmm. and they're on the men and they're, they're, they haven't drank in like six months or a year, do you pour them a shot of bourbon and hand it to them? No, but you got someone like me who weighed 305 pounds and almost died of a heart attack mm -hmm. on a trail. And every time I talk to someone, we go out to eat. Oh, you can cheat tonight. Yeah. Why do they do and that? And they don't understand. Like, that's the exact same thing. My addiction was food. Mm -hmm. And because my addiction was food, if I cheat, it's not like you eating like a cookie for me it's like i eat a cookie then i eat another cookie then i eat another cookie and then i eat another it's it's a snowball and i have to be able to address that the same way an alcoholic would um drinking a shot of bourbon you know mm -hmm. and and i'm not i'm not trying to say that it's the same thing but it's the, it's the same concept yes but for some reason people people don't view taking care of your body the same way they do with other things and so it's like, oh, just cheat. It's no big deal. But it's not, it is a huge deal for someone like me. Yeah. It might not be a big deal for you. But for me, every time someone says, oh, you can cheat tonight, I kind of want to punch him in the face <laughs> because I'm like, you don't understand the battle I've been fighting for the past however many years yeah. of my life with this battle with food addiction. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, um, if you want to help someone who's in a diet, don't ever tell them to cheat. That is the worst thing you can do because you could be personally responsible for that person completely railroading their diet. I never even thought of that. And I went through like the whole weight loss and all that, you know, that we just talked about. That's a good analogy. I think that, I think you're right. They're not the same. The alcohol they're not the same. And the I'm, food not, I'm addiction, not. Yeah. I, they're, I, but they're similar concepts. Yeah. At their core. Yeah. And I, and I really want to make sure I say that. I'm not, I'm not saying alcoholism and overeating carry the same weight because alcoholism can destroy families and destroy multiple lives. Whereas mm -hmm. the overeating thing, that's really your life. Yeah. It'll and kill you though. It'll kill, it will kill you and it can affect your family. It yes. can because their loss of you or having to run you to the hospital and take care of you when your health mm -hmm. goes south. But it's, it's definitely not the same thing. Right. And so I don't want anybody thinking that, that I'm putting them on the same level. I don't, don't want to do that. It is a good analogy that just shows what you're saying about the cheat meals. Yeah. But it is, it's complicated. There's a lot of nuance to it too, because like I did cheat meals and it worked for me. But they were designed. Yes. It they wasn't were somebody telling me, Hey, it's okay. Let's go out tonight. Yeah. You could cheat. Yeah. No you, big deal. Yeah. You can't do that because you're, you've got, this is when I can cheat. Mm -hmm. And it's not cheating at that point because it's a designed meal. Yeah, I so, guess cheat meal is the wrong word for it in that context. Yeah, because they call it cheat meals, but it's really not if it's part of your diet. Yeah. It's like this is the day that I can eat this food. Yeah, but it's I can't a plan. eat it the rest of the time. Yeah. It's like 
it's like taking a rest day as a bodybuilder. Exactly. Yeah, you <laughs> not every single day you you do get burnt out, man. You do. You get burnt out on anything. Big time. Well, like with the keto diet, like I said, I you know, I did a cheat meal and I didn't cheat. I yeah. had a full on affair with carbs <laughs> and it tore me up. It really did. So I so I know like I said, it was good that I did it because it made me not want to do it again. Uh-huh. But there are substitutions for things that you can have. I mean, I eat ice cream all the time, mm. believe it or not. Is it and sherbet? No, it's it's just keto ice cream. It's made differently. You know, because okay. there's certain things like all carbs are not created equal. Uh-huh. Like the thing with keto is you're dealing with something called net carbs. Uh-huh. So like alcohol sugars don't work against you. Uh, erythritol is a sugar, but it doesn't react in your body the same way as processed sugars or glucose or sucrose or any of that kind of stuff. So it's just, it's understanding how all that works, knowing what you can have, and you can still eat things that you like. Um, you just got to be smart about how you do it. And yeah. I, I think that's with everything, though. I think if you're someone who's getting into backpacking for the first time, you don't go out and hike 20 miles the first day if you've never gone on a single trail in your whole life. No, you be- look for resources and advice and information. Yeah. yeah. I think that with the uh, the nutrition, you have to educate yourself on those things because you can live your whole life uninformed. And then when you try to take action, then you don't know you don't know what to do. Yeah, always use wisdom. Like, be smart with what you're doing. I mean, that's that's the that's the big deal with all of us. Just be really smart about what you're doing. Don't don't do things that are going to hurt you. And and I think I think that's the problem with crash dieting. When people do the crash diets, it's just like drinking out of a fire hose. Yeah. You know, you're getting all of this stuff at one time, but you can't sustain it. It, mm-hmm. it has to stop at some point. And when it does, what's your reaction to that? I mean, when you start backpacking, you don't start with like. 20 miles, you start with like two or three miles, then right. you move to five to eight miles, then you move 10 to 12 miles, and then maybe you get to 20 miles. And then if you're Jason Wish, you do like 45, 50 miles, you know? And for those who don't know, Jason Wish is a buddy of ours who uh, he did, and he did an FKT of the Sheltoe Trace recently. Yeah. And uh, was pushing 45 to 50 miles a day. Smashed it. And he's unbelievable. And he lives a healthy lifestyle. And he lives a healthy life. And that's just it, man. It's like, in order to do big things, living a healthy lifestyle makes that more possible. So if you want to do like the Appalachian Trail or you want to do the PCT or you want to go up north and do the Great Divide Trail up in mm-hmm. Canada or uh, you want to do like what you guys are wanting to do, uh, Camino, de, Camino Santiago. de Santiago. Yeah, if you want to do any of that stuff. When I did Kilimanjaro, uh-huh. um, I trained a ton for that yeah. because it just makes it easier and you're able to enjoy these big events even more. But it's not impossible to do those things if you live an unhealthy lifestyle it's just I, gonna be harder i'll be honest with you i don't think kilimanjaro is possible if you if you're in the shape i was well in. that's an extreme yeah though. but that's what kilimanjaro i'm saying like, is an extreme well fkts are an extreme right but the you appalachian can't... trail i don't feel like is an extreme it i mean it is but you could go in as a complete novice and be overweight and everything and still yeah. complete the trail but there it's are highly... a lot of people that quit every year yeah a lot of people that are in good shape yeah, I mean it, the thing is, it, it, being in, it, getting your body under control mm-hmm. is the best thing you can do for your life. Period. Yeah, it transcends you, backpacking. Yeah, it's not just about backpacking; it's about everything in life. Yeah, and so I think it's just wise if you're wanting to, like I said, if you want to accomplish big things, mm-hmm. the best way to accomplish big things is take good care of the body you've been given. And uh, I hadn't done that for a long time, but I, I will know, say man. this: I will say this. I weigh about two forty nine mm-hmm. right now. Um, when I got off keto for a couple months, I gained some weight back. I'm, I'm back on the losing end of that again. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, I had to remind myself when that was going on that it's a journey, you know? Yeah. And that was the thing you're going to gain, you're going to lose, you're going to gain, you're going to lose. The, the goal is to lose more than you gain. Right. And, and so, yeah, I, I, I did gain some weight back, but now I'm losing that weight again. And, yeah. it, and in the past, if I started gaining that weight, I'd just be like, well, this is worthless. And I'd give up and quit. Mm-hmm. And I would have this like defeatist mindset, and it's not like that now. And what was really cool is yesterday, I'm hiking out at uh, at Copper's Copper's Falls, Copper's Falls uh-huh. uh, out at Clifty Wilderness near the River Gorge, and um, I'm flying up and down the trail, like just flying up and down the trail. And there was a young couple, that, like hiking in front of me that looked like they were in way better shape with, than me, and they were huffing and puffing, and I'm just going up the trail, you know, and. Um, 
it was good for me. That was like confirmation what I'm doing is right. Yeah. And that I'm, you know, I'm I'm able to do things I want to do. Now he'll still suck, man. Like let's just shoot straight. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't how care how an athlete you are. Dude, hills are no good, man. I don't do I don't like hills. Hills are brutal. And, and a lot of that is also weight related. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, if I lose another 60 pounds, imagine how much easier those hills are going to be. I know, dude. You can put 60 pounds in a backpack. Uh, no. <laughs> um, how, I'm getting my base weight down, bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, body base weight. Body base weight, base man. Weight. I'll tell you, and, and there's something to be said for that. There's uh -huh. a reason why your Andrew Skirkas and your Darwins and those guys, they, they're all skinny. Yeah. It's a way easier to hike as a skinny guy than it is a big fat guy. And yeah. so for me, like just getting to where I can do these things and have more fun doing it and not, I mean, it's, I still, it'll still be challenging. That's not mm -hmm. changing the, the idea that's going to be challenging, but it doesn't have to be laborious in the process. And yeah. so I'm really like, I'm excited about a year from now, us sitting and talking about, Hey, remember when you were that big weight now you're a hundred pounds lighter? Like, that's what I'm looking forward to, Yeah, you know? And, um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm excited about what's coming up with it, what the future's looking like. Uh, and I don't know what it's going to be like in five to ten years. I don't know what I'm going to be doing as far as, like, am I still going to be doing keto? Mm -hmm. Am I going to realize that if I keep doing keto, I might actually hurt myself? I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem like it because the way I'm doing it isn't, like, puffing my body full of cholesterol. You know, it's not, it's not that yeah. kind of a thing with it. Even if – so this is going to sound a little bit um, counterintuitive – Right, but even even if keto is hard on your body, it may have a a net gain. Even if it did mess up like some of your hormone levels and cholesterol and all that, that versus and you can transition off of it. That mm -hmm. versus living an unhealthy lifestyle where you're 100 pounds overweight and die at 60 is so much better than figuring out, oh, maybe I need to transition off of this because now it's having, um, you know, bad side effects for my health. So I can actually reinform myself Pivot. and make educated decisions on what's best for me. But it's got to be better than living a lifestyle that's going to kill you at a younger well, age. And, and, every, and the thing is, again, I'm not doing like – like, a lot of people think of keto, and they think that all you're doing is you're eating, like, heavy fat, cholesterol, like, yeah. stuff the whole time, and that's all you're eating, but it, it's not that, <laughs> you know? It's not like it's not like you're eating six packs of bacon every day. No. And that's my go-to diet, and let's sprinkle some cheese on it. No, no, it's not that. And the thing is, I eat probably a salad every day, if not every other day, and I eat green yeah. vegetables, and I eat, For you lunch, know, you had that salad and stuffed avocados. I was like, man, those avocados look so good. Oh, they were awesome, dude. And that's just it. It's like, it's just the whole thing of, do I get to eat cheese? Yeah. Do I get to eat bacon? Yeah. You know, I get to eat that stuff, but that's not all I eat. You know, it's in, and so like just understanding it's still a healthy diet. Mm -hmm. It just, I don't have the carbohydrates thrown in. And honestly, like if you look at white bread and you look at a lot of that stuff, it's not really that healthy. A lot of it's poison. <laughs> yeah. It's really not healthy. All the processed sugars. So, Bridget and I, um, we try to do this Whole30. I did that. And yeah. we don't have a Whole Foods here where I live. Yeah. There's a Walmart and there's a Kroger. And those are your two main, like, big chain grocery stores. Yeah. And there's no, like, little mom and pop grocery stores, you know. And there's no Whole Foods. There's, like, local butchers and that kind of stuff. But it it's challenging. Like, you, you have to really go through the weeds and look to find alternatives to like consistent alternatives across the board for everything you're going to eat. It's hard to find those things at Walmart. Like it is a challenge to go in there and be like, well, I'm only going to eat whole foods, but I want a balanced diet and I'll, I don't want to burn out on the whole 30 because I'm eating rice and chicken breast and broccoli every day. Well, I think the whole 30 is really designed to be a 30 day kickstart. Yeah. And so it's meant to be done for 30 days. And what it is, it's detoxifying your body. I think that's really all it's for. Yes. Cause the, the, the big takeaway from the whole 30 is no sugar. Yes. Like that's really the biggest takeaway from it is like, you're literally eliminating all sugar, if any, Yeah. you know, all processed keep, yeah, sugar, all of it. Like every but, last ounce of it. But you can it. eat an apple, right? Yeah, a green so, apple, yeah. 
So your body is designed to be able to take in these natural things. Like we didn't, if you subscribe to the notion of evolution and you think that the human body is has evolved into what we are now your body is not designed to take in those processed sugar like if you eat a candy bar your body's probably like bro what are you doing what am i supposed to do with all this sugar oh my god but if you eat an apple that's completely different nutrition let me put it this way we use cow feces as fertilizer Mm -hmm. we don't use human feces as fertilizer there's a reason for that because human feces is filled with chemicals yeah. and things that the body shouldn't naturally have in it, whereas cows are eating grass. Yeah. And so our, our the stuff that comes out of our body is a result of what we're putting into our body. You know, the whole garbage in, garbage out thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a reason why a lot of backpackers don't like the idea of pooping in the woods and leaving it. That's why wag bags are such a big deal in some places, mm-hmm. because it's toxic to the environment. Well, because human humans eat terribly. That may be true. I don't know. I, I'm uninformed enough to make uh, to have an opinion on that. But I will say two things. One, in the U.S., I think that most most cows are grain fed. Because like it it costs more. Cows to, or grain grain grass doesn't matter. Okay, you're saying that it's better than maybe the chemicals it, that we be put in it's our body. It's better than eating like the amount of chemicals that are in our food like yeah, pick up scary man pick up a coca-cola and read the if you can actually pronounce every word on the back of that you probably have a degree in science yeah. because nobody else is going to understand what those words are fennel kettle monix or something you know like what is this stuff and that's junk we're putting in our bodies yeah and i think it's junk i don't know i don't know what any of those things are if it's I think- made in a lab it wasn't made to be put in your body <laughs> And, and I'm not saying, and here's the thing, I'm not vilifying anybody, okay? Like, I'm yeah. not saying that if you drink soda, you're evil. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is, we all have to admit this, uh-huh. that we put crap in our bodies that shouldn't be in our bodies. Yes. And and it's unnatural. And so there's a reason why, you know, some people get sick more often than others because they don't eat well. And mm-hmm. so their body, the immune system is down because the things you need to have a healthy immune system aren't there. Because you eat McDonald's every day or Taco Bell every day. Um, I think it's like uh, 40, 40% of your meals through the week for the average American are fast food. Really? That's almost half. That's insane. I know. That's why, like, in the U.S., we have uh, – you can look up the statistics. It's like the a majority of people are overweight. It doesn't mean they're obese. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you can be overweight – well, and the, and the also, what they consider obese by these doctors right. is sometimes a little overkill and overweight too. Like, yeah. at, like even so, we have insurance at work, and like you have these tests done. They do your blood work and they check your BMI and all that. And I had a six pack, and I don't mean beer. I'm talking like I weighed 188 pounds at six three, and you were ripped. Yes. Well, I don't know about ripped, but well, if my you had body, a six pack. You're ripped. My body fat percentage was like eight percent. I mean, it was low. But you were overweight. I was overweight, according yeah, to their standards. Garbage, I was yeah. like, what? What the heck? Like, I didn't get as much on the... They do, like, these rewards and stuff for your insurance so you can get gift cards or bicycles or fitness watches or whatever. Right. And they're partnered with the, the insurance companies because the healthier you are, statistically speaking, the longer you're going to live, and you don't have to go to the doctors often. And health and, insurance is making money hand over fist at that point. Right, because you don't have to, they don't have to pay for you to go to exactly. the doctor all the time. Exactly. So they want you to live a healthier lifestyle. For them, it's going to be cheaper. So they give you these rewards. And I didn't get as much rewards because I was overweight. And I was like, I could show you right now right. how good of a shape I'm in. Right. Like, we could have a push-up contest right now, and I'm going to beat you by 50. You are going to beat me by 50 Not I'm terrible you. at push-ups. Not you. I'm saying for me at the time. Well, I'm I was just in letting the best you shape know. of my life. I'm just letting you know, if we were to do push-ups right now, you would win. You'd probably beat me. Not a chance. Yeah, you'd I'm probably pushing up more me. weight than you are. Yeah, but your arms are shorter. Yeah, but it doesn't mean they're stronger. Yeah. You crush me. I, I would... But, uh, you would crush me. Let's just be know. real. Let's just be real for a second, and I'm okay with it. Like, there's no part of me that feels any pride in this. But yeah, I don't good. know if that's true or not, John. But I will say you're a kind human being. I will say the the way the metrics that they use to measure 
overweight and all that stuff. Like it's, it's more complicated than the oversimplified version that we're using. So me quoting these statistics, there are definitely some gray areas and some inaccuracies. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you want, you want a really easy way to mm -hmm. control your weight and not eat crap, mm -hmm. eat leftovers for lunch. Oh, I do it all the That's, time. That is one of the best ways to prevent eating garbage. It's like when you make your meals, make enough that the next day you have food for lunch. Yeah, and then like, you're, you're not getting Doritos out of the vending machine and uh, a Baby Ruth. Yeah, like you've got food. you know. And here's the other thing is we, I think, and I guess we'll end with this because I don't want to go too much longer, but uh, you have to r change the way you think about food. Food has to be yes. considered fuel for your body, not like – art or mm -hmm. you know comfort when because when when think the especially when food becomes comfort uh -huh. that means every time you're depressed every time things go rough at work you're, you're gonna medicate that with food uh -huh. and, and it doesn't so, have to be depressed like that's a pretty extreme like but it also can saying, be anytime a, you're upset or frustrated yes. you know when you are depressed you know what ends up happening is you turn to food some people. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. When you when, when you make if, food about comfort. Yes. When you make food about comfort, that's what you turn to. Because, you know, if, if you're somebody, like, if your wife's upset, mm -hmm. you are her comfort. So she comes to you. Mm -hmm. Well, if your comfort is food and you get upset, that's you go you to go your food. To. And so you got to change the way you think about food. Food has to become fuel, a means to an end, not the end itself. And that's what the problem is with a lot of people. Yeah, I agree. And my piece is... Two things. One, you have to have the mindset shift. There has to be some some type of wake up, and I don't think it has to be a near death experience or a uh, an injury that's going to put you down for the count or anything like that. You can have a mindset shift and it not be of something that was on the most detrimental. And two, I think one of the number one tools that you can use in order to uh, to Change your eating habits if that's what's holding you back from a healthier lifestyle. You don't necessarily have to do keto or, or whatever, a carnivore diet or anything like that. No. If you can portion control, then that will change a lot of things. You don't have to make it complex. It, it is as simple as instead of going to the couch with the bag of Doritos, take a handful and put them in a bowl, and that's all you get. That's it. You can eat Doritos. Don't you bring the bag. Ice. Don't bring the bag. Don't bring the bag. Take some out. Now, if you want to take it to the extreme, which is what I did, I, I weighed them out. I looked at the nutrition facts. I logged the calories. And once you do that for like a month or two. You know what it is. Yeah, you know what it is. You don't even have to keep doing it as long yeah. as you are strong-willed enough and have enough grit to stick to it. You yeah. have to have the discipline. And, and I want to throw a disclaimer out there. We are not doctors. Well, we are not yourself. dietitians. Speak, I'm a doctor of backpacking, baby. Okay, so anyways, so we are. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not for, an expert in listen, anything. Listen, listen. Don't please don't look at us as advice givers for diets. No. We're just giving you our experiences. It's all anecdotal. Yeah. And and I'm saying that too because I don't want someone coming back and suing us if they go on some kind of diet and it doesn't work out. They, and they didn't get mad. listen. Didn't listen to the whole episode if they did. Yeah, that. that's right. Because we are not dietitians. We are not doctors. No. We're just sharing our personal experiences, which I don't even know. This is what we're going to talk about. Jeremiah just goes, "Hey, we're going to talk about something." I'm like, "Okay, cool. <laughs> Let's go." Well. I, I actually wasn't going to talk about this. I was going to ask you about the drone, but we'll save that. For we'll save that episode. for a different episode. Yeah. But uh, you had one other thing you said you wanted to do. You said there was a change your lifestyle. And what was the other? No, it was portion control. Portion control. Yeah. Don't take don't take the whole bag of chips. Yeah. Just take some. Yep. It can be a lot. Yeah. It can be a big bowl, but not the whole bag. Don't take the whole bag with. You. Don't pour the whole bag in the yeah. bowl. <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been a different kind of conversation. I wasn't really. This just kind of happened. Every yeah. once in a while, we do a podcast and we have a whole plan. And then we basically take that up, ball it, and, all, and throw it over our shoulders, and we're we're done with it. Yeah. So well, we just like to talk, man. It's like yeah. hanging out with friends. That's true. That's true. I'm just glad you still consider me a friend after the way I beat you down in that last episode we did. Um, I won at shuffleboard. My life's okay. You did. You did win at shuffleboard. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. You 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 got me pretty this good. This is on me shuffleboard. tooting the horn for myself. Toot toot. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, for myself and Jeremiah. Thank you for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next one. Adios, folks.